Hello, Anime Nyan here, and today I'm going to be teaching you how to make porn in Blender. And I'm dead serious. So, <laughs> the reason why is I just think that there's just a huge taboo around the general subject of porn and sex, and I just don't think that should be the case. I think it's just wrong that it's that porn is vilified so much when it's something that's just so natural. And the second reason is I just don't think that there is a lot of Blender tutorials out there which cover the basics of how to get into making 3D porn and how to start. We do have a NSFW uh, Blender Discord right here, so please check in the video description for a Discord link uh, to the NSFW Blender Discord. I will be delighted to help you there, so please just come on this Discord and you, if you have any questions, just type them in here and I would love to answer them. The final product is going to be this today, so we're just going to cr try to create something really simple. Uh, just a render of blend of Loba, and we're just going to be using a pre-made uh, model from SmartBase by NextTR3D. And also, a quick disclaimer, like, <laughs> if you do NSFW art, pretty much everyone hates you. <laughs> like, PayPal hates you, Patreon hates you, YouTube hates you, Twitter hates you, your job probably hates you, and if you ever get discovered, you're probably going to get fired. Most of all, no one is ever really going to acknowledge what you do as real art because it's porn and yeah. So let's get started. The first thing that you need to do is you need to download Blender. So just download and install Blender. So that's the software prerequisites. From there, we're just going to open a Blender uh, new Blender tab. So these are just some very basic uh, Blender things that I think you really need to know, especially if you're just starting off uh, with Blender. Basically, we just need to learn these things. So navigation around the viewport. So in general, we don't really need this stuff here. So we'll just press A and to select everything and press X to delete. So, okay. And I'm just gonna create a new cube. So to create a mesh, you need to use the hotkey Shift and A, right? So this will bring up the menu to create a mesh. So from here, I'm just gonna create a cube, right? So I just have a simple cube here. So let's go over how do we navigate on the viewport? So these are the three controls that you need. You need, it all revolves around the middle mouse button. As we can see, middle mouse button is rotate, shift middle mouse button is pan, and control middle mouse button is zoom. So just click down on your middle mouse button right here, as you can see in the bottom left right there, uh, on this side here, middle mouse button. So this is rotate here. So I'm just rotating the viewport. As you can see, I can rotate around uh, my cube. I can move it up and down. So I can just rotate with the middle mouse button. If I use shift plus middle mouse button, as you can see, I'm panning. So I'm just move. I'm still moving, but this time I'm not rotating. I'm just moving as if I'm stuck to a wall that's right behind me, right? As you can see. Um, okay, so basically, uh, what else do we have? Yep, so we have a control middle mouse button. So control middle mouse button is to, pan, is to zoom in and out. So as we can see here, we're zooming in and out. Another way of uh, navigation that isn't as commonly discussed is the shift plus tilde button. So the tilde is the button on your top left of your keyboard, and it should look like this. When you're in this mode, when you press shift plus tilde, you can see that we have this um, uh, we can move our mouse around and we're just moving as if we're like a small camera. We're rotating. Um, where, if you press W, you can see you're moving actually forward really, really slowly. But how do we speed this up? You just scroll in with your mouse wheel and you'll speed up. You'll gradually speed up. You need to keep scrolling in with your mouse wheel and you'll see you're gradually speeding up. <laughs> I don't know why I'm so slow. It starts off so slow. But as you can see, I'm speeding up again. I'm still going forward with my mouse wheel. I'm going much, I'm going faster now and I'm going faster and faster and faster. And as you can see, I'm, if I, I keep scrolling, I'm still, I'm still scrolling, you, you can keep going faster. So eventually you'll go really fast. And yeah, so as we can see, I'm still scrolling in and I'm starting to go really fast now. Scroll in is to control your speed. If I wanna slow down a bit, cause look, it's kind of uncontrollable now when I press WASD. Um, if you just scroll backwards with your mouse wheel, you can see it actually slows down, but you need to keep sc scrolling backwards. As you can see, I'm slowing down and the movement is more uh, controlled. So basically uh, shift tilde is to enter uh, fly mode. So, uh, mouse wheel is to speed up. So we need to keep scrolling in, remember. So it seems like it doesn't have much of an effect, but you need to keep scrolling in quite a bit. If you scroll backwards is to um, slow down. 
The final thing is just this teleport. So if we move our cursor over a mesh here, so we can just move ourselves backward and just press space bar. As you can see, we teleported straight to that mesh. You can use the space bar to teleport to the meshes that you really need. So this is really good for movement and especially over large scenes. So now to exit, uh, to exit fly mode, we just press the left mouse button. As you can see, it's on the bottom left corner. It says confirm. All the controls are right on the uh, bottom bar right there. As we can see, we're back to our normal controls of uh, middle mouse button to rotate, shift middle mouse button to pan, and control middle mouse button to zoom in and out. So just click down on it. Uh, to move. Yeah, okay, so that's all the navigation controls. The second thing we need to do is just the transforms. So basically, uh, G is move, R is rotate, and S is scale. So when we just press the G hotkey, as we can see, we're moving this object, its location in space, right? So I'll just press Control Z to undo that. And now we can just rotate. As you can see, we're, we just pressed R to rotate, and now we're just rotating it by moving the mouse wheel. Okay, uh, not the mouse wheel, the, the mouse itself. And then let me just press Control Z again and we'll press S. So S is to scale it. Can you see it's getting bigger or smaller? So bigger or smaller is what S does. A small thing that we can do is we can control, we can control uh, these transforms by doing them on a single axis, by controlling it with either the X, Y, or Z keys. Let me demonstrate that. So G or G and X, as you can imagine, moves it on the x-axis. So we're moving on the x-axis. G, Y is pretty logical. We're moving it on the y-axis. And G, Z, we're moving it on the z-axis. We're moving it up and down. So I'll just reverse those controls. So, and if you ever have like, maybe you have like the cube, something like this, right? <laughs> so we've had some random controls and I wanna get back to the original one. I just press Alt G. So that will clear the location data. Alt R to clear the rotation data and Alt whoops, Alt S to control, uh, to clear the scale data, right? So that's something pretty useful as well. We can also, as I was saying, we can uh, transform on any axis with the other keys as well. For example, if I wanted to rotate along the X axis, so I will rotate like this, so R X, and now I am rotating it on the X axis, right? And I can also R Z to rotate it on the Z axis, R Y to rotate it on the uh, Y axis. Yeah, so Alt G or R Alt S to clear all the transforms again. And uh, let's do one more thing, which is the scale on the X axis. So as you can see, this is pretty useful because we can kind of make this a chair leg or we can also do S, or S, S, Y to scale on the Y axis, S, Z to scale on the Z axis, as you can imagine. Yeah, so that's all the basic controls for Blender. Um, also, one more thing to create meshes, we just press Shift A, brings up this menu. And then from here, we can just create whatever we want. So we can create uh, these meshes. We can bring in other meshes. So shift A and I can create in a cube or I can create in a monkey. Pretty much I'm creating meshes here. So we can just close this now. And okay, so let's go over the, the actual video now. So how do we actually get this model for um, to animate? So basically just type in smart base to Google. So just type in smart base to Google, type it in, press enter, click on the first link. Okay, and from there, just search Loba in the search. There will be a search on top. Basically search up Loba, click on the first option and you'll find Loba Apex Legends. So this is by the model by NextTR3D. So thank you so much. Uh, full credit for the model goes to him. Um, yeah, so you just want to scroll down here and you want to scroll down to these files here. So you need to download both of these files. So what you want to do is press, uh, just click on download right here. And yeah, so your download will appear shortly. You just wait for it a little bit and it will download. Yep, and then you can save the file. I won't do it because I've already downloaded it. I'm gonna go back and you can just download the second one. I won't download this either, but it's it's a down, it's a a down library for free uh, NSFW models. So just a small thing about that. So some people just don't really like using uh, pre-made models. And I understand because you can't really customize them as much. Like making models by itself is really, really time consuming. A lot of these models are come pre-rigged and pre-textured and everything. So you don't have to do a lot of the work. So I do suggest that, especially if you're a beginner, to start off by using free models from SmartBase. So just download them. So download both the textures and the blend file. Remember to download both. So I already downloaded it, I already did it once, so don't worry about this. But basically you're just gonna have these two files here. So this zip file, you wanna click on it, you wanna right click on it and extract here. 
right? And from there, you can delete this textures file. I won't, just in case I need to re-record this video. Okay, so what we're gonna do from here is we're just gonna open up uh, Loba, the Loba file. So you'll see this message that appears here. Next TR has used some Python scripts, allow his rig to work. So you actually need to allow execution or this model will not work. Now, before we do anything else, I'm just gonna save another copy. So I'm gonna go save as, I'm gonna go file, save as, and I'm gonna say Loba custom maybe, just so then I, I can have the original file, blend file, and I can change it and everything and uh, nothing will happen that is bad, okay? So you'll be brought into this menu first when you come into uh, this file uh, here. So it, you will be in the Loba menu. So you can just press N. So I might just enable screencast keys first. So I can, yeah, let me just check it out. Yeah, okay, I've enabled screencast keys. So you can press N to hide this menu here. You'll be in this Loba menu first. So I just want to uh, do a quick thing on what is a mesh and what is a skeleton. A mesh is the 3D shapes that you can see in the renders, right? So as we can see here, we have some different 3D shapes. This is a 3D shape, uh, this is a 3D shape, uh, this is a 3D shape. Even if we put this into material preview mode, and we'll just wait a second, it's these things that we can see in the renders. So it doesn't need to be gray, it can be any color, as we can see here. Uh, it can be like red, it can be whatever. It's just these 3D shapes that we can see in the renders. So everything here, this is all 3D shapes, right? So we can see like even Lobo herself, she's a 3D shape. So I'm just gonna reverse all that with Control Z, Control Z, <laughs> Control Z, because I don't wanna ruin the model. And if I do that, if I move the meshes like that, uh, it's going to ruin the model. Okay, so even this cube here is called a mesh. These are all meshes. Then what is a skeleton rig or armature? So the first thing you need to know, a skeleton rig or armature, they're all the same thing. We use the terms interchangeably. Skeleton rig armature means the same thing. So the skeleton here are these black things right here. So I can select it and it's a group of bones uh, that controls a mesh's movements. So it's a group, so a skeleton consists of all these parts here. So let me just select the skeleton and go to pose mode. So as we can see here, we this skeleton is made up of multiple different bones here. So we I can just select each one of them. So you can see I'm selecting different bones here. And basically, um, these bones are what a skeleton is made up of because a skeleton is normally made out of bones. It kind of makes sense. But what does it actually do? So if I move these bones here, you can start to see that the model starts to move. So not only can I, so I just press G here to start moving it, if you remember and that means to move the location. I can, not only can I move it, I can also rotate it with the R key, if you remember, and I can also scale it up even, <laughs> but pretty much we never use scale on armatures basically. Uh, well, we do, but it's rare. It's very rare because we don't really like to scale it up because it looks really, really weird. So um, basically, this, this, the bones, they control how the mesh moves, how it rotates and how it scales. So moves, rotates, and scales. And we can do this for every single one of these bones here. So we can move this, we can rotate it, and we can scale it with the GRS keys. Okay, so I'm just gonna press A to select all the bones here. I'm gonna press Alt G to remove, uh, to clear the locations. Alt R to clear all the rotations, Alt S to clear all the scales. So that's uh, something that you may need to do. Okay, so one more thing. So in the difference between a mesh and a skeleton, in the top right here, you'll see that we have an outliner. This is called the outliner right here. So this thing here. So in the outliner, meshes, as you can see, this mesh here, this cube, has an upside down triangle. A skeletons, Armatures or rigs, remember they're the same thing, have a person on the very left as their icon. So that's one way to, different, to differentiate them. As you can see here, I can tell this is a mesh here because it has an upside down triangle. The caracal is a mesh. Same as all these other ones. Um, yeah, but anyway, that's all good. What we're gonna do now is we're just going to, we're just going to uh, pose the character. So I'll delete this cube by just pressing the delete key and I'll just select the skeleton. So, and then I'll go to pose mode. But 
you'll notice that if you select a mesh and then you try to go to pose mode, you're like, hey, wait a second, why can I not see pose mode here? The reason why is because Blender needs you to select a skeleton first before you can go to pose mode. So we have to select the Loba skeleton. You can also select in the uh, outliner here and you can select the skeleton and you can go to pose mode now. Okay, so just a thing about uh, Next.TR's specific um, meshes or things, <laughs> uh, rigs. He makes some really nice rigs, but you can see that um, the, the Loba menu will only appear. So he has a customized menu it will only appear when you click on the Loba skeleton, right? So if I click on anything else, the Loba men menu will disappear. So remember, how do we find this menu again? Press N to toggle this menu. So N to find this menu and press um, the, uh, what do you call it? The Loba skeleton. Okay, so from here, we can actually do a lot of things. We can adjust, so we can just toggle these things here. Uh, for example, we can toggle her coat fur. Do I want to do that? Yeah, okay, so as you can see, this coat fur here. So I won't toggle all of these, but if you want to create smart, basically you can remove her coat here <laughs> and that will show her breasts and nipples and stuff. So, and you can also do the same with her pants and everything. I won't do it in this video because obviously this is going on YouTube and I cannot show any uh, nudity, but you, as you can see here, you can adjust, you can adjust whatever you want. You can take off the boots, you can take off whatever. So. Next year, he has some fantastic <laughs> models, but it also has some specific things that we're gonna to have to look at a little bit later. But also, we also have this thing, which is skin selectors. So, um, uh, Next year did a really fantastic job. And basically you can, in this menu here, uh, in the Loba menu, you can toggle which skin you wanna use. And even on the, on, the, on the zeroth one, you can even uh, change what is the accent color. So you can change it to pink if you want, I guess. I don't know, I'm not really sure why you'd want to do that, but sure. <laughs> um, let me just go, but I think I want to try something, something like this, like maybe three, just for the purposes of this render. And yeah, I think that will be it. So now let's get to actually posing our skeleton. And yeah, so I'll just select the skeleton again, select the skeleton, make sure it's selected. I can have a look in here. It's the skeleton is the Loba skeleton. Uh, as you can tell by the person icon, it's a skeleton, go to pose mode. So don't worry if it becomes unselected because if it's the last selected item, um, it will be fine. But it doesn't matter, you can just select it, go to pose mode. Now, from here, I'm just gonna press N to give myself some more space. And I'm gonna start adjusting this into our pose that we saw at the start of the video. So I want her to be crouching down basically. So I'm just gonna press G to move her downwards, something like this. And I want her butt to be in the air a little bit. In fact, I can adjust that even better by just going G, um, G, Z maybe. So that will just push her downwards, remember? And G, um, Y maybe, just to push her backwards a little bit. Okay, now I'm just gonna rotate her body backwards because I want her to be leaning backwards. Uh, so R, X, something like this. Yeah, this was decent. So maybe somewhere around here. So almost touching the ground maybe. And that's fine for me. So from here, what else I'm gonna do is I'm just going to, uh, so I might actually just go to material, uh, what is this called, uh, solid mode, because if your computer is slow, um, basically uh, solid mode will help you out um, because it improves performance because Blender does not need to show all the textures. So we're just using, I'm just using G to move her, her hands downwards. And yeah, so I'm just gonna go RX, so that's the wrong rotation. So I'm gonna try another axis of rotation then, R, Y. Okay, so that's still the wrong rotation. I want her to be, yeah, R, Z. So I did R, Z to rotate it along the Z axis. And yeah, so I just want her, her hands to be on the ground as support maybe. Um, yeah, okay, so I'll do the same thing here. So I'm just gonna go G and just move her hand down here maybe. And then R, uh, Z. Yeah, so I'm just gonna, rotate her, her hands and place them roughly on the ground. It doesn't matter too much for the purposes of this render, um, but I'm just demonstrating how you can use IK rigs. So this is an IK rig. Uh, you don't need to worry too much about it, but basically it means that you can pose your character uh, very naturally. Um, 
Okay, so I'm just using RZ to push her legs, her, her foot, her feet outwards, so then her legs will kind of be spread. So RZ to rotate along the Z axis, and I'm just pressing G um, to move her legs. Yeah, so I think this is decent, but I also want her mouth to be open. But you can see there's no bones. So these things are called bones again. There's no bones here that are for her mouth. So that's kind of awkward. I can't do anything, right? No, you're wrong. <laughs> but basically, um, uh, Next TR has chosen to hide some of these bones. Um, so we can toggle them on and off. So as you can see here, so if I wanted to do things with the fingers, I would toggle on this bone layer. Um, but uh, for the sake of adjusting her uh, mouth open, I, I can just use the face, face primary controls and I can turn off the main ones. So then I can just see her face and I can focus on these. So I can press N again to uh, toggle that menu off and then from here, I just want uh, the bone that controls her mouth. So that is the mouth control bone. So if you can if you can have a look here, we have these three bones here. It's a little bit hard to see because they're a little small, but this mouth control bone will open her mouth. So I'm just pressing G, and as you can see, her mouth opens. I don't want it too wide, just a little bit, just as if she's like moaning. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's just have it somewhere here. So maybe once we set up the camera, we can uh, kind of fine tune it, but I think this is fine here. And yeah, that should be all good. And then, yeah, that's decent. I'd say that's a decent pose. And now what I just wanna do is I wanna go back to material preview mode and I'm just gonna press N again because have a look at her eyes. Her eyes, you know, while they're okay, they're not really facing the direction that I want them to be because I wanted them to be looking at the camera. But maybe let's just set up the camera first. So I'll just press, uh, I'll go back to object mode. So if you press shift A in pose mode, you'll be like, hey, why is the menu to add meshes not appearing? The reason why is because you're in pose mode. So you need to go back to object mode, shift A, and let's add a camera before we do anything else. So when we add the camera, so I just went shift A camera. Let's, before, to adjust it very quickly, let's zoom in on the camera. So I'm just using the scrolling in. <laughs> Technically you can use the scroll inwards to zoom in and out as well, uh, but you have the control, uh, middle mouse button has more control. Um, over the zoom in and out. So we're just using the rotate and we're just gonna fine tune a rough position where we want the camera to look. And I think this kind of position is okay. So I'm just gonna go with something like this. And then I'm just going to select the camera. In fact, where is the camera? So the camera is under this one here. It's under lower body. I don't want it to be here. I want it to be outside of this collection because it's not part of the lower body collection. So I'm gonna press M to make a new collection. So I just select the camera in the outliner, then I press M and new collection, and I'm gonna call this collection uh, camera and lights. Camera plus lights, let's do this. Okay, cool. And then from here, I'm just gonna press, I'm going to select the camera in the outliner, press Control, Alt, Numpad, Zero. This pretty much shifts the camera to your view. Um, from here, it still needs some fine tuning as we can see, so I'm just going to go to view and camera to view. Uh, check that box, press N to hide that. And now you can see that we're, when we move the, the, um, the camera in the scene, we're moving the, also the camera here. So I think something like this would be fine. Uh, this is when you want to start looking at your resolution. So maybe for me, I want a, yeah, uh, let's see, let's see. So, and don't worry about cropping things out. That's a key thing. So I, I might also go to the camera settings here. So you'll notice that you won't be able to see the camera settings if you don't select the camera. So the camera settings are here, but if you select something else, then you won't see it. So you need to select the camera first, click on the green camera for the settings, and yeah. And from here, let's see what we can do. I'm gonna change the focal length to maybe around, I don't know, 77. I think that matches my previous render. And yeah, that's fine uh, here. And yeah, and obviously uh, you can get Loba <laughs> naked uh, in your renders because uh, uh, next TR, you can just toggle off the clothing basically, but <laughs> that would just make it smart. But for this purposes, it's kind of be, gonna be um, safe for work. Anyway, um, yeah, I think that's fine. Um, that's decent. Okay, let's see what else can we do. Uh, I'm just going to shift. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna go down to the render settings here. So this is the render properties and I'm gonna go down to film and enable transparent. This is very important. If you don't enable this, your renders will not have like transparency. So the background will render as black instead of, 
instead of um, nothing of true, true transparency. Okay, yeah, so I think that kind of angles okay. Maybe I'll put the hair up a little bit. But as you can see, she's not really looking at the camera, so we're just going to fine tune that a bit. So I'm just going to uh, click on the Lobo rig, go to pose mode, and okay, what are we gonna do? So I'm just gonna press N, I'm gonna go to Loba, that Loba menu again. So remember, press N to toggle this properties panel and go to Loba. And, and then I'm just gonna turn off the face, oh no, I'm gonna turn on main and turn off face primary. Okay, and from here, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna adjust her eye settings. And you'll be like, where's the eye settings? <laughs> because um, the eye bones are right over here. So you need to zoom out a whole lot because Although I move the whole rig downwards uh, from with the torso control, uh, these bones right here, uh, they stay right here. So we gotta uh, zoom out for them. Now, so this pretty much controls where she looks. So if you look, at, if you move it to the left, she moves. She looks to the left. You move it to the right, she looks to the right. Um, uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. Let's just move it uh, in a reasonable position. Maybe something like this. Yeah. Okay, let's go to the camera maybe. I'll press numpad zero to go back to the camera view and select that bone and I'm just gonna move it. So I just want it to look like she's looking directly at the camera because yeah, we kind of want that. Um, yeah, so something like that. Maybe looking downwards, yeah, that's decent. I'll just say that's decent for the purposes of this. Um, and then, yeah, okay, I might just fine tune. I just maybe just want it a little bit wider. So from here, uh, you can fine tune these resolution settings a little bit. So this will help, um, uh, it'll basically, um, uh, yeah, so it will show you, like you can you can see that it adjusts to, to a little bit wider or non-wider depending upon these, like your settings here. So, but it gives you just a little bit of control. So um, basically you wanna crop it down to wherever you want. So I'm still just moving the camera just a little bit Okay, yeah, something like this. I just want the focus to be mainly the face. Okay, that's, yeah, I'll say that's decent. Okay, and now the final part we wanna to get to is just the lighting and then, yeah. So from here, I'm just gonna drag from the top left corner to make another window. And I'm just gonna press N, so I'm gonna lock. So I'm gonna go back to the view tab and turn off camera to view so that now when I zoom in and out, it doesn't affect the actual camera. So I'm just gonna zoom this one in right here. And I'm gonna to go to the render view. So this is the render view, and this is what it will look like in the final render. So you'll notice it looks pretty horrible. Uh, that is because of the HDRI, or not the HDRI, but um, the world settings. So go to shading and change this right here from object to world. So uh, next here, I just made this uh, background right here. You don't need it. So you can just delete both the RGB, so just uh, make a marquee by clicking and dragging on these and then just delete these two nodes here, the RGB and background. And when you go back to the layout tab, you'll notice that it's completely black. That's because you don't have any lighting. So, oh God, why is this? <laughs> I just realized that this one right here, this this render, this uh, view, camera to view is still on. So I'm just gonna disable that. Okay, from here, I'll use this uh, window here to set up my lighting and I'll use the right hand window to uh, find to see if my lighting is correct. So I'm gonna turn off Simplify here. And for general purposes, you can use EV, so the default will be EV here. Um, but EV is not very good. It's more, it's more for a preview style rendering. What you really wanna be using is you wanna be using cycles, but this does take a much longer time to render. So just be aware of that. You can make EV uh, very similar to cycles, but Cycles render engine is the best for visual quality. And you wanna change this from CPU, so the default will be CPU to GPU compute because your GPU is much more powerful, um, your graphics card. Okay, from here, uh, I'm just going to change this uh, window right here to object mode. And that's because, so then I can start adding some lights. So from here, I usually like to use area lights. It doesn't really matter. Um, Everyone kind of has their preference, um, but I kind of like area lights. Um, but okay, so from here, I, I go to the light settings tab. So I prob probably should move this one. So I press M uh, and move it to the camera and lights uh, section because it should be under there, that collection. Just keep things organized. 
and I'll change this shape to disk. It doesn't really matter too much, um, like the shape, but it just makes it a more pleasant shape uh, in the eyes if you have any glow. So then I'll just rotate this. So I'll go RX. Oops, that's not the right one. Let's try RY. Yeah, so RY is what I'm looking for. So the trick with this, the trick with lighting in general, is you don't want to um, you don't want to do it all in one go. So if you just use one light and you just turn up the power like to a million, this will be really flat lighting and it looks kind of bad because a lot of these areas will just look really bad. So basically you want to use a lot of different lights from different positions and you want to vary their position, uh, their location and their size, right? So, okay, so I'm just going to use one light. I'm going to move it maybe to this side. I'm going to change it. I'm going to turn down the power a little bit. And yeah, so it's a lot of personal preference, but I'm just going to shift D to make another copy of this light. And maybe I will put it under here, like maybe on the right hand side, maybe I'll, I'll just check. So I just want to check. Yeah, I also might change the viewport set, uh, samples to 32. And the render set samples don't, doesn't need to be so high, maybe even 64 just for this purposes, because you don't really need that. And uh, there was the simplify thing on, but I think, yeah, pretty much you, you can turn it off for this one. You don't need the simplify uh, thing because that's, as it says here, it's a setting for the simplification uh, of the um, scene for quicker preview renders. For our render, we want it to be uh, really uh, high quality, I guess. All the other settings are okay. Actually, uh, when you scroll down to color management, maybe you should change this one to medium high contrast. This will give your an image an immediate boost and it will look immediately much better. Okay, so let me just continue with this lighting. I'll just R, Z, this, R, Y. So I'm just using control uh, Z just to re reverse some actions if I don't like it. Um, you can also change the color of the light. So I'm gonna to go to the light settings. I'm gonna change the color of the light, right? So, so this will help tell you where your light is shining. And also it actually looks, it helps create interesting uh, things, uh, interesting lighting. Another small trick is uh, basically uh, I might, no, actually, no, I'll, I'll delete this light. I don't need it. Um, whoops, I'll shift, control shift Z to redo that, but I'll create a new area light. Another, another trick is basically you should use backlights. So backlights pretty much highlight uh, the edge of your subject. So I'll just demonstrate right here. So as we can see here, we can see that on the right hand side and everything else, we can see that there's this separation from the background. This especially helps when you have something in the background, but for now we don't. But um, you can see that it highlights the cheek, the legs. It creates this cutout effect, uh, which makes it look a little bit better. So, and yep, oh, where did I put that light? <laughs> Again, I put it in the body, whoops. Let me just press M to move it to the body, uh, to the camera and lights. So from here, you can actually toggle off the effect of, the, of each light so you can see what does each light do and what does it contribute to the lighting setup? As you can see, it creates this silhouette, which makes a very nice kind of rendering and it, and it's part of the uh, three point lighting setup. Okay, so yeah, so I think something like this would be decent. I might add some, uh, a few more light, just one or two more lights just below the legs. Uh, maybe <laughs> don't add a, a light like that. Um, let me just add a, point light here. Um, yeah, so that's way too bright as you can see. And yeah, so I'm just gonna change the radius down a little bit. So the trick with the radius with lights is basically the smaller the radius, the sharper the light. So the light fall off will be really sharp. Um, and if you have a really large radius light, the light, uh, it will be really soft lighting. So the, the, the lighting will be very even. So that's usually uh, very desirable for beauty shots or like fashion, that kind of stuff. Um, okay, so let's just change this. Maybe I'll change it to a different color. What kind of color? That's interesting, uh, but it's way too bright. Um, let me just change it down a little bit. And I think I still want just a little bit more lighting on her face because she's just underlit there, it feels like. And this is still way too bright. Can I change this to pink or something? I don't know. Yeah, that's, that's 
good, but I just don't want it to be so bright. I just want it to be a touch. So maybe 450 milliwatts, is that okay? Yeah, okay, that's interesting. That adds an interesting kind of vibe to the image, just like this, this pinkish light. And then let's just do one more light on a face just to uh, just to add some interest. So we can highlight the subject. We can do the we can highlight the subject a little bit better in Photoshop or whatever, but um, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to turn down the radius of the light because I want it to be a little bit focused, I guess. Because especially if you turn up the radius too much, um, it will light up more of the image, basically, more than you want. And this is still way too bright. Um, yeah, that's interesting. Um, maybe just a little bit, like 500 milliwatts or something. Let's have a look. What does that look like? Yeah, uh, that's okay-ish. Um, I want it to really focus in though. So RX, especially with static renders, you can really focus, um, take your time to do this because animations, you, can, you um, uh, it will be harder. Because like your, your your light setup will have to, have to constantly move with your character, but we will get into that a little bit later. Okay, let's have a look. Okay, let's have a look at this lighting setup. Okay, I made it in <laughs> lower body again. Let's move it to camera and lights. And especially with these lighting setups, you can actually just because oh wait, let me just move this light here as well. Because this light is under a single collection, you can actually just turn off this entire collection and just try another lighting setup. For example, you could just like, uh, what I like to do is I like to make multiple lighting setups. So I'll just maybe, for example, I'll just make another lighting setup just real quick, like point. If I just did a point lighting and then I, let me just make another lighting setup. I'll just say lighting setup two. I won't do it for this video because uh, it'll make it way too long, but you can just try some different lighting setups. So you could hide this lighting setup and perhaps I could try something completely different. And maybe I could try lighting from this side and then doing something else altogether. And that actually looks pretty decent, even though it was random. Um, but yeah, just having the light appear next to her head is actually okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't really need it for this case. Let me actually just try that out by moving this to the camera and lights. And let's just, well, that's interesting actually. That's very interesting. Um, so let me just have a look at the individual effects of these lights. So that's that. Wait, okay, that's the camera. <laughs> okay, this one here, so it's just some lighting on her face and like that, it just highlights that specific part. Interesting, I'm just thinking I just wanna take this down just a tad, just, just, just a little bit. Okay, no, 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 I, I need, I need, I need 300 milliwatts at least. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay, so we still have that shadow there. So don't worry about shadow, like shadow is kind of your friend when lighting. So you need to have um, some shadow a mix of highlights and shadow that creates interest. Otherwise, if you just have flat lighting, your image will look very uh, bland and boring and you won't even be able to see the 3D shape of the image. So yeah, I will call this done because yeah, it looks decent. And like from here, if you wanna just render out an image, it's really, really simple. So I will just, in fact, uh, for this one, let's try high contrast and see how that looks. Yeah, high kind of contrast is fine. Um, if you if you want to do some further color correction in Photoshop or anything, uh, you can just turn it to low contrast or whatever, and then that will give you some space and room to move around. Like if you really want, you can even use the raw format. So you can, instead of um, instead of filmic, you can use raw, and or filmic log. Uh, both of those will give you some more room to move around in color correction. Um, but for this, we're just going to keep it basic. We're going to go with medium high contrast. That's fine. Okay, so I'm just gonna save this here and I'm just going to, how do I render here? So let me just check that all my render settings are okay. So right now, 1963 by 2482. So how do you know you're using the correct render settings? Basically, um, uh, it doesn't really matter. Like don't worry about conforming to 1920 times 1080. What you wanna do is make sure your image looks correct, as in you're cropping into the right parts, the most interesting parts of the image in this case the body and well the face I guess and uh, from here you can just make sure make sure this is on PNG so RGBA so RGBA means that you have the the alpha or the transparency um, if you don't check this image uh, this option you won't have the transparency 
color, color depth eight is fine and the default um, compression 15% is fine. Okay, so now you just wanna adjust this folder here. So you just click on that folder for the output and just make sure it's in the correct place. So we're just gonna change it to, I'm gonna create a Loba, Loba tutorial. Okay, cool, fine. We're just going to do that, press accept. Okay, so uh, from here, let's see. So we're just gonna go make sure that there's nothing else on this. Yeah, I think this is decent. I'll just check the, I'll click on Loba, and make sure there's nothing else that I missed. Simplify subdivision render. So I can actually just turn this down here, even like to zero. Do I, like, I do you really need it? Um, I don't think you really need it. Um, Oh yeah, and also I've forgotten about all this other stuff. You can change these colors here. So if you really wanted some different colors for the fingernails and makeup and lips and whatever, um, next here has made a really nice model here uh, for, for that. Um, I completely forgot one thing. So basically before you do anything else, so render 64 of samples is, is okay for this, um, but we also wanna do uh, for we want to do some a really basic thing. We want to enable this. So go down to your render passes and enable the denoising data pass. Okay, and from here, we're just going to go to the compositing tab and just click on use nodes. And yep, yeah, so we can we can leave the viewer node here, but we don't really need it honestly. And we're just going to add a. So I'm just I just pressed Shift A to uh, add a node, and I'm going to search for the denoise uh, node right here. I'm going to connect noisy image to image, noisy normal to normal, and uh, albedo to albedo, denoising albedo to albedo and image. So this isn't like the full, if you want, you can denoise like the, the passes separately and it's a little bit better, but for the sake of this beginner tutorial, we're going to just denoise it uh, with this simple setup. Also, uh, just to make sure that you're using the fastest render settings possible, just make sure you just go edit, preferences and uh, go for uh, system and make sure that you're using probably CUDA. I think CUDA is like one of the best. I think optics is for uh, RTX cards, but honestly, I don't really have a good experience with it because it, it takes, it always takes really long to render, like uh, to start with the render kernels or whatever. So just use CUDA, make sure these uh, NVIDIA GeForce, like all your, your, uh, your, GPU is uh, enabled and your CPU is enabled. And from there, you can just uh, make sure that in your render settings, it's GPU compute and path tracing. Okay, yeah, then that's it. So from here, we can just go render, render image. And yeah, that will be basically it. So basically we created a compositing path. So after it was rendered, like it will also composite it. So that will mean it will denoise the image uh, after it's done. Yep, so it'll just composite and it's done. Okay, we'll just get, go image, save, and then, um, yeah, so we'll save it into the folder that we wanted to save it into. So like if you have the image here, it isn't saved yet. So you need to go image, image, save, and then just go to um, Blender renders, uh, Loba tutorial, and then just save it as anything. And then from here, you can just use it in Photoshop for your thumbnails or whatever. <laughs> Actually, probably not for your thumbnails, but um, just on Twitter or post it anywhere else or, or on Reddit. Uh, but yeah, so, so just save the image. And yeah, then you're basically done. So thank you so much uh, for being here. I will try to make some further tutorials um, that are uh, on more complex topics. This is kind of just a really simple render. We haven't gotten into animations or anything, um, but thank you so much for being here. You are my lifeblood. Anime Nyan, out.